Bonjour, uh, I'm Tom Shanklin, the director of the children. So I'm, uh, I went to the National Film and Television School in, in, uh, in England to make uh, some short films there. And uh, what, actually the first film that I made at film school was a, a short horror film called Shadow. And uh, I made it with, uh, it, was, it was all set in uh, some toilets. <laughs> and um, it was very dark, uh, literally and metaphorically and dramatic, dark in every way. And it was, it was good. No words, just becomes very violent. No words. No words. And um, uh, the writer was a guy called Clive Bradley. And um, after we, did, we collaborated on this film, we were kind of the only people at my film school who liked genre films. So, and I loved making this film, Shadow, with Clive. So after, at the end of my film school, he'd written a, a, a treatment for a film called Devil's Algebra. And it was a very, very dark serial killer film about altruism. And um, this film, it took us about six years to make that movie. And that became my first film, uh, Was, W Delta Z. And um, the film was, the, the the interesting thing about the film was that we had this scenario where you've got two victims and a killer testing love and you know she kind of tortures one person to see if love exists and then they push a button if they can't take the pain to kill their loved one da, 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 da. and we thought this was the ultimate dark exploration of uh, whether love exists or not but no one would give us any money to make this film because it was too extreme. But then, of course, what happened was Saw came out and Hostel came out and all the So then we finally got to make our, our movie. But we, I like to think that we were there first, Bruno, <laughs> yeah, but the English thing. finance, they didn't, they weren't interested right. until the film. So then what happened was right after was, I then went straight into making The Children with the same company, with Vertigo Films, who wanted to do another film with me, and this is uh, what we did, we did my second film, The Children. Well, it partly, the, the connection was James Richardson, who produced my first film, was, he had uh, optioned this script called Miria, which was written by uh, a guy called Paul Andrew Williams, who he made a film called The Cottage, yeah. and um, a very good film, London to Brighton. Uh, and Paul was happy not to direct this script. So he wanted, uh, so James Richardson, the producer, we wanted to do another film together. He sent me this script, Miria, I read it, and it was very much, it was, it was kind of like a zombie movie, where kids turn into zombies and kill their parents. So. I sort of loved the idea of the kids against the pair. I thought that was such an interesting premise for a horror movie, but I didn't really want to do like, like zombies. I didn't really want to do a kind of sci-fi-ish thing. I wanted to do a very straightforward horror movie where these kids, for no reason, seem to turn on their parents, and the parents have to face this ultimate horrible choice that to survive they might have to kill their own children and to, I just felt that was such a kind of outrageous disturbing premise for a horror movie I wanted to do that in a kind of realistic truthful way and I thought that could be really kind of fun well fun yeah. in the kind of yeah. you know yeah. strange yeah. sense <laughs> of the word. Well, the kind of thing that I loved about this project, there was things, there was certain things I wanted to do as a filmmaker was like, one of them was do a horror film in the daytime. I thought it would be really cool to do daytime, no nighttime, no dark shadow, you know, just sort of all very, yeah, daytime stuff. I also, I loved the idea because a lot of my friends at that time were having children and I, I loved watching the way I would go on weekends with them and we'd all, all the grown up, you know, you get drunk and the kids go crazy and then the kids go more crazy, they start getting hysterical and then the parents always make these excuses for them, they always say, oh they're just a bit tired or you know, oh, they just, you know, they just need a bit of attention or whatever. But the kids going crazy, and I kind of, it, I thought it was so interesting this phenomena because I don't have kids, so I found it very fascinating watching them have these power struggles with their kids. So I just kind of thought that was another thing I thought was quite like a sort of zeitgeist thing as well about a certain crisis in 
in how we should bring our children up and are our children turning into monsters oh do we should we discipline them more should we discipline them less you know all this anxiety about the next generation i thought would be another cool that was another thing that interested me just as a sort of social theme about it too mm. and then you know and then also i like the idea that in the as another challenge as a filmmaker with children if they don't have any superpowers if they're not zombies if they're not aliens how can they be scary because they're not very strong but what can you do as a filmmaker and a storyteller to create real terror around the figure of a kid so again as a kind of horror filmmaker that kind of fascinated me and i loved all the kind of subgenre of films with mm. scary kids in a kind of really intriguing to me so that was the other appeal was kind of as a filmmaker just that i've always loved that genre Well, I kind of, like, my, my ambition for this with the kids was to make it feel like they were playing the most fun game that they'd ever played, where they have fake snow, they get to run around and kill grown-ups, they get to have all these great makeup, and, you know, yeah. and it's so, they get to dress up in cool clothes, and um, I just sort of made it feel like I would just be like a kid on the set. I would just kind of roll around and sort of scream and act like an idiot and they just they loved it and then I did a lot to prepare them before for all that like I thought I'm going to take all the things that I think will be extreme in this film like any time if they have to like say stab someone or if they have to watch while one of the grown up actors is really emotional those were the two things I thought I wanted the kids to, to, to get used to so I took the children off to the workshop of the, the guy, Paul Hyatt, who does our special effects makeup and stuff. And he's worked because he did like the monsters in the, des the creatures in the descent and stuff like this. So his workshop is just full of old bits from movies of like exploding heads and all the rest of it. So the kids just loved it. And it was just like, you know, a, the best toy shop ever. So that was one thing I did. Then I would get, get them playing games with the grown-ups where I get the, gro you know, the kids could be like they'll play this game Wink Murder, where they like wink at a grown-up, then if they do that, then the grown-up has to die hysterically, and in theory the game is you have to guess who the killer is, but really I just wanted the kids getting used to the fact that when these uh, grown-up actors start being emotional, it's just a game as well. So when we got on the set, really it was pure joy. It was only about me creating a nice happy environment for them there and giving them lots of support, not working them too hard and making it just seem fun. So they were like so, so cool. They enjoyed it so much. And they started making their own movie of the children. <laughs> they borrowed a camera and their, chil their, their movie of the children would definitely be way more violent than mine because it was all just fantasy for them. Yeah. In a way, I had, when I was, I felt that the film had to build very slowly to get the climax at the end, to have, to give it real power. So I felt for me, it was literally the shots in the woods where, when the car comes out and you first see one new child and then you see ten children together or whatever and then mm. you get into the, you know, the last bit. I thought if I want that to have real power as a kind of horror moment atmospherically, it's really about everything that's gone before and just creating a, as much terror of children, of children um, in the audience, but building up to that very slowly. So it was kind of, um, I mean, when I was doing the stuff in the woods specifically, we definitely pushed the grading, the color of that. Um, you know, we did do uh, little things to the photography to make it look a little more heightened, not too naturalistic. So the woods became a bit more mysterious and had a bit more character by, I guess we would push the contrast a bit, made it a bit more desaturated. And we just, we kind of get, gave it a sort of a, a, a slightly darker, more mysterious quality. So it wouldn't feel totally naturalistic, but really, to be honest, that wasn't very bold, that was just a fairly easy thing to do. Mm. And it was sort of much more, I suppose, about trying to fill the, this, the film with as many disturbing images as possible before then, and not too much violence, mm. because I felt that in a film with children, it's actually more about using the audience's um, 
preconceived idea of children as being innocent and combining, so if you find images about that, like say a child's toy, a doll, is an innocent thing, but if you have the doll in the stomach of <laughs> the girl's father, then suddenly that's a totally twisted image that sh mm. you should never happen. So if you, even in small ways, if you have the child with their nice pink glove, but they're holding their mother's earring and it's got a tiny bit of blood and flesh on it, again, it's just juxtaposing sort of purity or innocent, the, the ideal version of childhood, which is all bright colours, beautiful, blah, 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 with, with nasty images of violence. So I try to make sure that I was sort of building up this creepy, disturbing sort of imagery through the film to kind of turn the idea of childhood on its head. So by the time you get to the end in the woods, I didn't really have to do too much sort of hysterical directing to get power from that climax. And um, also, you know, I love the shot when Casey is sick in kind of slow motion in the woods. She goes and she's sick and suddenly, I don't know, is she changed into one of the, ki the, the, the kids? Is she violent now or is she just disturbed by what she's seen? And I, again, I love the mystery. Yeah. And I felt that Maybe. if I can keep the mystery going, again, it will be a great climax because mm. I didn't explain anything. I just wanted to keep I felt that would make everything more haunted and richer. So maybe some of this was like instinct, and I'm probably not very articulate about it, but some of that was what I was conscious of, was trying to make things ambiguous, trying to fill it with disturbing imagery earlier on to try and get some power at the end. Well, that was so easy because Hannah came in. I'd never seen her before. She was amazing and she came in. And it was like in the audition. She read the scene in the greenhouse with the uncle. And um, mm -hmm. I was just, I was just like, whoa. That, it was fantastic because some of the actresses would come in and they would be much too, um, much too knowing and more too sort of sexually flirtatious, other ones just it was it didn't really work but Hannah had this exact combination of being a little bit provocative but you didn't know if it was just teenage attitude or it was um, genuine or again she was mysterious she had a kind of like yeah. and she was very pretty she's got those beautiful big eyes and you, and she was also just uh, the nicest person you could work with so she was just you know absolutely perfect for it but literally she just walked in the door read it once and i knew definitely you are yeah, the person for it. this film <laughs> totally it's so easy yeah yeah well you know what it's probably really surprising but all the directors that the first ones that i really had most made most impression on me were when I was aware of cinema and directors were actually real heavyweight European auteurs. It was like I love Bergman, you know. My I, I <laughs> you know, I was sort of thought he was fantastic. So when I saw um, the uh, the Seventh Seal uh, for the first time, I just thought, oh, that's so amazing. And then I saw Cries and Whispers, and I was like, oh, it's just Thanks. so incredible. It's just no, no. So I was totally inspired by these the, these like real old-style European auteurs. Then I guess um, what I, then I've realized as I sort of went to film school and stuff like that I kind of remembered all these films that I liked as a child uh, that, and they were all kind of genre because I think kids tend to kind of love you know little boys love cowboy movies war movies thrillers and stuff so I kind of realized that I, that I had seen lots of Hitchcock movies as a kid I just never knew that they were Hitchcock movies but I remembered seeing Rear Window I remember seeing Vertigo and being totally blown away by it. So I started watching all these Hitchcock movies and became more and more obsessed with him and or, or his movies as a director. And then I kind of and also around the same time I remember that I, when I was about twelve I saw Don't Look Now, the Nick Rogue film, and I, that completely blew my mind <laughs> as a teenager. But again, I I didn't really th I wasn't really thinking of it as uh, of, of, of of like being a director because of that film. But when I went back and rediscovered the, these films that had a huge effect on me as like a, a child and a teenager, they were all m much more like kind of genre cinema. So 
but I suppose for me, what I've kept from my love of like European auteur art house cinema is I always love the way that they're so intense in the way they try and dissect characters and they try and take these actors and get the camera really into their mm. psychological emotional space. So I've kind of always liked seeing genre films where I feel it's got the same level of kind of exploration of character with all the scary stuff at the same time so that's why you know those movies like Don't Look Now would be a great example mm. of like a relationship that's beautifully explored but it's a really goes to a really scary place so that's my kind of like hybrid of like directors really yeah